Hey folks, it's been a while since I've done any videos from my computer desk in my rather sparsely decorated bedroom. Yes, I'm still going to get some stuff up on this wall back here if I ever get around to it. I'm very lazy. Um, but I wanted to talk about a, uh, well, an idea that's come forth from a conversation I had recently. There's this notion, there's this sentiment that will often come up if you're in a discussion um, about uh, politics or policy in America, social policy or otherwise, and you'll have these people who label themselves as, as patriots and stark supporters of the country, staunch supporters, I should say, and they, uh, you know, it, inevitably, at least certain members of the group, I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush, but certain members of that demographic will often say things like, if you don't like it, you can get out. You've heard those words uttered before. We all have. And it almost seems like a knee-jerk reaction certain people have whenever they hear somebody complaining about the country or complaining about the direction it's going in or complaining about the direction it will go in. And um, I get it, you know, because it, it speaks to certain, I guess, visceral, well, certain feelings that we have, certain emotions that we have when we react to, um, you know, to these the different, uh, you know, the dissenting opinions that are out there and, uh, when we're dealing with an emotionally charged subject. But it ignores a lot of stuff. Uh, one of the first things is this idea that a person should have to leave the country just because they don't like the way things are. Or they should keep quiet. If they don't like it and they don't want to leave, then they should keep quiet. It's kind of the corollary to that, right? Which is silly, right? This country wouldn't even exist if people living here hadn't decided to speak up, and more than speak up, literally fight for certain ideals. Now, I'm not going to get into a deep rabbit hole about, you know, how this country was founded. First off, I'm not an authority on that subject. I know enough, I think, you know, for the average person, maybe. I'm always trying to learn more. Um, but I'm not a historian. I'm not, I'm not by any stretch of the imagination an expert. Um, now, some would argue that, well, that's not relevant because that was founding of a new country. Now that we have the country founded and we have a constitution in place, things are different. Okay, well, let's flash forward. Um, the Civil Rights Movement is a great example of this. Even after slavery had been ended, you know, in the 1860s, the Civil Rights Movement still had to occur. A hundred years later, there were still inequities and equalities. There's still inequities today. And those things didn't just fix themselves. People had to stand up and say, hey, something's wrong here. They demonstrated by the millions. And there was unfortunately a great deal of violence, at least in pockets at certain points. It was a tumultuous time. And there's still turbulence, you know, in the social sphere. But the point is that dissent is a natural part of the political process, and it should be. And to say that a person who disagrees should just leave, well, I mean, how free is that? How American is that? And then there's an irony as well. Um, people who say, well, if you don't like it, you can get out. Well, for, let's say right now, there are a number of people on the political right, I'm oversimplifying for the sake of time, but people on the right who are saying this and, you know, thumping their chests about it and, 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 you know, acting, you know, because things are going to change in their direction, or they think so anyway, you know, um, the political course of the country and some of the policy of this country seems that it's going to drift in a direction that uh, aligns with their views. And so they're saying, well, that's the way it's going. If you don't like it, you can get out. But these were the same people who, throughout the entire previous presidential administration, were complaining about the way things were going, right? So what's up with that? Another interesting thing is that these individuals, this particular ones I'm talking about, often are very, very bad with irony. Like they just don't catch it. Oh, they'll, they'll speak of irony when they think something's ironic, but they can't actually recognize when it's really going on, especially when it applies to them and their behavior. So those are some things I wanted to point out. And then, you know, on top of all that, getting past it, let's say a person did want to leave. Um, these people also often ask, uh, or they act as though it's easy to leave your home country, barring the fact that you shouldn't have to, but they act as though it's something you can just snap your fingers and do. Let's assume a person has a passport, there are no bars, no holes, they can travel to many places around the world and they have their pick, right? And let's assume they can afford the ticket. Well, then there's still the issue of, well, what if this person has a family? Do they uproot their entire family and go? What if half of their family agrees and half their family doesn't? 
that creates issues, right? Um, what about the fact that they will be leaving behind all the people and everything they know? They'll be leaving behind a whole culture. I mean, you move just across the United States and there can be culture shock. Imagine you go to a whole other country, and I have some friends and family who have done exactly that. Then there's the process of moving to another country. Again, I have friends and family who have done this. Um, you know, even if it seems like a country you could adapt to, a lot of other countries have much stricter immigration laws than we do. So it's not as though you just waltz through the door. You want to go up to Canada? Good luck. You're right. You're probably putting yourself through a few years of really hard work, a lot of red tape, and jumping over a bunch of hurdles before you were fully integrated into that society and you know integrated into their political system and able to work as a you know full-time productive member of their you know of their society um, now I know people who are going through this right now and I've looked into it a little bit myself I haven't personally moved to Canada um, I don't suspect I will though I guess never say never um, you know and so you have all of those things and then what if you have to go to another country where you don't speak the language so now you have to learn a new language what if it's a country where there's no demand for your skill set, right? We're in a particularly interesting service-based economy here in the United States, and if you move to a lot of other countries that might be accepting, might be willing to take you in, um, then you have to contend with that. So you have the, you know, you have the just the personal stress, you have the financial stress, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars that you would have to spend between the physical cost of moving, um, you know, taking care of all of your debts to kind of close the accounts and get things squared away here at home, uh, the cost of actual immigration in terms of the paperwork you have to do, the things you have to get filed and approved, um, the new stuff you've got to buy because you're not going to be taking your whole house and everything with you. Um, so there's the financial cost, there's the emotional cost, there's just the logistical difficulty of arranging it, the amount of time that it ends up taking, the difficulty or the effort you have to go to in terms of learning a new language, adapting to a new culture. Uh, aside from just the emotional stress it causes you, there's a physical drain, the amount of time it might take before you're able to become gainfully employed in your new home. All of these things a person should have to go through, what, because they disagree with some, what you perceive is a, per a prevailing opinion? Please. So, these are things to think about. The next time a person says, if you don't like it, get out, realize they haven't thought it through. just wanted to share some of those thoughts. Hope all of you are doing well. Stay tuned.